So welcome to this video and it's going to be all about trigonometry and finding a missing angle. So first of all what you need to know. Well trigonometry tends to be about right angled triangles so you'll see a triangle with the little box mark indicating a 90 degree angle and uh, the triangle will have um, an angle x that is relevant to the problem. It'll either be uh, an angle that we're told and we need to work out some other information from it or it'll be an angle that we need to find out. And the triangle uh, has three sides. The longest side is the hypotenuse. Um, you know the longest one uh, because it's always opposite the 90 degree angle. The 90 degree angle is going to be the biggest angle in a triangle so the side opposite it is going to be the longest one, the hypotenuse. The one we call the opposite side is the one that's opposite the angle that's relevant to the problem. So the angle in this problem is the one that I've labeled in red with X and opposite that is the opposite side. And then the third side of the triangle is the adjacent side. It's called the adjacent side because adjacent means next to something and the adjacent side is the one that's next to the angle X um, but isn't the hypotenuse. So you need to know the basic trigonometric ratios and they are sine of X or sine of the missing angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tan equals opposite over adjacent. Um, so I'm assuming that you've been taught this already and this is just for revision really. And then you've got the um, inverse or opposite trig ratios um, which you use if you're trying to find out a missing angle. So x is arc sine opposite over hypotenuse, x equals arc cos adjacent over hypotenuse, x equals arc tan of opposite over adjacent. Um, so if you're trying to find a missing angle you use the uh, inverse trig ratios or the arc ratios as they're properly called. So we're going to look at an, at an exam type question. Um, it's not from an exam but it's very similar in structure to the kind of question you see appearing in many exams. And it's work out the size of angle X. You've got a triangle that's X, Y and Z and you're given two of the sides. One of them is 20, one of them is 12. So in the second part of this we're going to show how to solve that problem. Okay, so welcome back and before the break we looked at this exam question and it had uh, three sides, three vertices or corners X, Y and Z and two of the sides were labelled with uh, lengths 20 and 12. So first of all we need to figure what those 20 and 12 are in terms of opposite, hypotenuse and adjacent. Um, well if we're talking about the angle X, I've labelled that in red, then everything is going to be relative to that angle. So first of all we've got the hypotenuse that is 20 uh, we know it's the longest side, the hypotenuse, because it's opposite the 90 degree angle. And then the 12 is next to the angle, the X, that we're trying to find. So that's the adjacent because it's the one that's next to the relevant angle. So we now need to think out of our trig ratios, sine, cos and tan, which of those is relevant to a problem with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And the answer to that is cos, because uh, cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse. 
And if we put in the information that we know, then cos of the missing angle x is 12 over 20, because 12 is the adjacent and 20 is the hypotenuse. 12 over 20 is 0.6, so cos x equals 0.6. Now, here's a mistake that people make quite a lot. Um, they'll just punch in cos 0.6 into their calculator, but x isn't the cos of 0.6. x is the angle that when you do the cos of it, you get the answer 0.6. So we want to know um, the cos of what angle will give you 0.6. And the way to do that is to use our inverse trigonometric ratios. So x is going to be the arc cos or inverse cos of 0.6. Well, let's have a look at how you do that on your calculator then. Um, first of all, if you want the answer in degrees, you need to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So you see on the screen there's a little DEG for degrees. If you're not in degree mode, you might be in radian mode, um, then uh, you will need to change your calculator to degree mode to be able to get the answer in degrees. So um, we want the cos of something. Now this will be different on different calculators, by the way. Um, some calculators, older calculators, will have you uh, type in the number first and then uh, press the function. Other calculators, newer calculators, um, tend to have you type things in in the same order that you'd write them. So first of all, um, I want not the cos of a number, but the inverse cos. So on a lot of calculators, there's a button that says something like uh, second, or it might say function or shift, but it's, it's usually a button that's a different color that allows you to um, use a different function on the button you're going to press. So I'm going to press that and then cos to get the inverse cos of a number or the arc cos of a number. Now on a calculator, uh, that is often denoted by cos with a little minus one. Other calculators might write arc cos, but it's, it's very common to see this cos with a little minus one. And that's supposed to mean the inverse cos or the arc cos. Um, it's not notation that I particularly like for other reasons because it's confusing with something else. Um, but you just need to know what it means. So um, the inverse cos or the arc cos of, I'm going to type in 0.6. Um, and then some calculators will need me to close that bracket that I've made a lot won't, so I'm just going to press equals on my calculator and I get the answer 53.13 and some more decimals. So that means that the missing angle x is 53.1 degrees. 